Hello and welcome to Fishy Fridays, a sit down informal chat with me, the amputee angler, where I go through all the species we have around our coastlines, how we can catch them, I'll show you some catches as well, and I'll tell you a few fun facts that you may or may not have known in the process as well. So sit down, grab a coffee or a cup of tea, and let's have a chat about these wonderful fish we've got here in the UK. Today then we are going to talk about the mighty conger eel, the marmite of fish species, anglers either love them or they hate them, predominantly though boat anglers like myself, we don't mind these because they give us a good bend on the rods, they are one of the hardest fighting fish in the UK outside of your tuna and your shark species, they're right up there with the hardest fighting fish, they get to big sizes as well and they are located all around the south coast and up the west coast predominantly although you do get them up the east coast as well, just not in as big a numbers. Um, but they are absolutely rife at the minute. Uh, they're not particularly commercially targeted. Uh, they do obviously get caught in trawl nets and stuff like that, uh, but there's no dedicated fishery to conger eels. As a result, the numbers are just exploded here on the south coast, especially not sure how it is down the west, but we see them everywhere now in places that we never really would see them. Um, even shore anglers, bass anglers who are live baiting and fishing squid and stuff like that, they're pulling up 15, 20 pound eels off the beach now. Something that was unheard of a number of years ago and certainly in the numbers that we're seeing now. So sizes then, let's talk about sizes. Um, they get big, they get really big. The British record conger eel rod court stands at 133 pound and a few ounces currently. And that is an absolutely monstrous fish. You're talking sort of seven, eight feet long. Um, but they get even bigger. The biggest herd of conger eel was a 350 pound specimen in Iceland, though not local. But in Iceland, they found one caught in nets that was 350 pound. And I, I'll try and find a photo of it if I can. Uh, but that must have been some absolutely monstrous conger eel. Uh, generally though, you tend to pull out the average size is around 30, 40 pound with a lot of straps. If you're fishing inshore reefs, you will pull out a lot of reefs. They tend to habitat wrecks more than anything else. So if you want the bigger fish, you do have to get out on the wrecks uh, and predominantly out there in the channel on those deeper wrecks that no one really fishes. That's where you're gonna find these big ones in the, in the World War II sunken wrecks, the big metal hulks with holes in them. As many hidey holes as possible, that's where you have gotta be. But they do get absolutely monstrous. So be prepared that you need to fish gear accordingly. It's no good going out and trying to fish them on a wreck on 1220 gear because it will just snap your rod. And that does happen quite often for people that are underprepared. So you need your 30, 50 pound class gear, maybe even 50 pound class gear up. You know, your old style broom handle rods that have got no give. If you know you're on a wreck where there's big eels, you need to be getting them out of that wreck, up away from it, otherwise you don't stand a chance. They will just hook their tail round and you, they will just sit there and go, well go on then, give it what you got. And you'll be yanking, 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 and ultimately something parts. Gear wise, uh, as in end tackle, you normally need a good pound of lead to get down because you're fishing in 200, 150, 200 foot of water, maybe even more if you're down the west. Um, and you need your traces. So I fish 200 to 250 pound mono. I never fish wire. I don't like wire unless I'm shark fishing. And the reason is it does a lot more damage to the fish and I've actually seen belly sliced open uh, and such like, and it cuts into the mouth a lot more wire. So for that reason, I don't use wire for anything, even tote fishing, nice 250 pound mono, they're not gonna bite through that. So think, think about the fish as well, even though they're brute of a fish, do think about the fish when you're, you're, you're trying to target them. Um, other than that, a nice big reel, I fish 80 pound braid and then I fish a long rubbing leader and then I fish my gear at the same time. Hooks, you're gonna need big strong hooks. I tend to fish a 10-0, something like a cox and rule meat hook or a uh, something really meaty because they will bend it out. If you have any weak link in there, a conger reel will find it, I promise you. So yep, either a single running ledger or you can fish a, uh, a two up conger rig with some muppets and a lead on the bottom. Tactics wise, uh, predominantly you're gonna be fishing a wreck at anchor, okay? It takes a bit of skill to get the, the boat in the right place. But once you're on there, what you'll find is that you will get some baits down and then the smaller reels will come out first because they tend to be a bit more active and a bit more quicker to the baits. What I like to do is put some fresh mackerel down first or something I've just caught, like some pout on some baited feathers. I put that down first, get the scent in the water, get the blood in the water, get the eels all coming out the holes and looking. And then what I'll do is I'll switch over to my favorite bait, which is cuttlefish. 
absolutely love cut off a bait. You can catch them quite easily here on the south coast through the summer and into the autumn. That's when I stock up my freezer and I have a whole year of free bait on cuttles. Mackerel tends to be quite soft, so the pout get in there, pout have a right go at it, and then you change, you could, if you've got a, a wreck that is covered in pout, they will shred a mackerel bait in seconds. So a cuttle bait could be a little bit tougher. Just be prepared, you might have to change your baits every 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes, bring it up, change it down, fresh bait down, get that scent going, and just keep hammering it. And eventually you will, you'll be striking into the little ones and you'll be like, yep, yep, yep. And then you'll strike one time and it will suddenly pull back when you've got something decent on. Um, and that's what we do for baits, okay? You will lose gear conger fishing. You're fishing on big, snaggy, horrible, sharp, jagged wrecks. So you will lose gear, so be prepared for that. What you can do is make up a load of traces beforehand, and you can even have a few pre-baited up. Just stick them out of the way somewhere. So when you're coming in, if you've got a fish on, unclip it, put a new rig on, send it down, and then deal with your fish. Conger reels are really hardy, so don't be scared to get hold of them. A common mistake that people have with conger reels is they think they're like jaws and they're just gonna start biting hands off. They won't. Obviously, if you're trying to force your hand in there, you're gonna get bitten because that's the same with all fish with teeth. But don't be scared of it. Get hold of it, unhook it. You will need a T-bar, a stainless steel T-bar for these, um, and it just makes unhooking the fish easier. And I'll put a little clip in now for that as well. Other than that, you're all good to go. You may also want a chin gaff, depending on the size of your boat. Just hook the conger reel under the chin, hoi it over the gunnel, and then just unhook the gaff and get the gaff out of the way. Um, because the bigger reels, if you try and pull it on the conger line, you're just gonna, it's, something's gonna part as you bring it over. So um, have a set of gloves with you as well is another little top tip, because then you can, you know, you're not worried about getting bitten so much and you've got a better grip on the fish. And, if the line slips, you're not gonna cut your hand. That's another little top tip there. T-bar, gloves, and a gaff, um, and that's all good. And then for your photos, best way of doing it, just pick them up, hold them under the belly. If they're a big fish and you start sticking your fingers in the gills, all that'll happen is you'll rip the gill covers out, and you don't wanna be doing that. It's not a good look, and it's, even though they're eels, if you love them or hate them, whatever, still think about your fish care and try and do your best to look after the fish for your photos. Couple of little top tips to end with here of fishing with conger eels. The first one is just be aware that when you're bringing the eel up to the boat, it will do what I call a death roll. A bit like a crocodile when it's ripping meat off, it just spins and spins and spins and spins and spins. Conger eels are absolutely famous for this. As soon as they get to that boat and you start pulling tension on them to get them in, they will spin and spin and spin. If it does that, don't keep hold of the line. If you feel it starting to wrap, just let it go because it will just go round and round and round. And I've seen one go for 30 seconds straight, just spinning, spinning, spinning. And all they try and do is they part the hook off. So when that comes to the boat, just be aware that it's gonna do that because nine times out of 10, they will spin and spin and spin. Once they stop, just bring them in, all right? Unless you've got a gaff in it, or you, it's a small eel, you're just gonna get it in. But if you've got a big one, just be aware that it can cause damage. The second top tip I'm gonna give you is when it comes to the boat, if you're fishing a running ledger, the first thing you wanna be grabbing is the lead. Don't worry about the eel. The eel, if it's come to the boat now, it ain't gonna suddenly come off unless it's only lightly hooked. But as, the, as you're bringing it in, especially if you're on a bit of tide, as you're bringing that in, just be conscious of that lead, the, the lead weight. If you're fishing a pound of lead and you're pulling against the tide one way, the conger eels wants to go the other way. If it suddenly parts down the conger eel end, that lead is gonna come flying back. Because as you get to the surface, that lead pops out of the water. You know, it's, it's just floating in midair doing this. So if you suddenly then got a conger eel that's doing death rolls or it makes another run, that lead is gonna start going everywhere. And if you get hit with that, it's gonna hurt. So grab hold of the lead and just unclip it and put the lead out of the way. Done. You haven't got to worry about it then. It's just you, the eel, and whatever else you've got on your trace. That's it. The third top tip I'm gonna give you is always start your conger traces on a big, heavy clip swivel. Uh, I, I like to use a, a coarse lock swivel, Cox and Rule coarse lock, a nice big chunky one. 
There's no finesse needed here with conger eels. They will take thin gear, small gear, small looks, big hooks, whatever. Don't worry about whipping it up with bait elastic, all that stuff. Just put your bait on and send it down. They don't care. But by having that clip swivel on the top of your trace, when it comes in and you get it in the boat, you can then just unclip the trace and put your rod out the way. Because the last thing you want to do is have your trace all connected up in such a way where you've tied it direct to like a main swivel. Then the conger eel starts going mental, which it will do on a boat. They go absolutely mental, start tail slapping people a lot. The last thing you want is it snapping your rod. So unclip your trace, put your rod in the holder, get it out of the way, or even, even do what I said earlier, clip another fresh trace on and send it down. And then you can worry about the T-bar in and the rest of it, and you can get it all off, the, the eel off the boat safely. Safety first with this, right? I know it's a fish, but they are big, they are strong, they are all muscle when you get hold of one, and they will hurt you with their tail and their bodies, and they will break gear if you give them the chance to do it. Baits wise, top tips, as I said before, change your baits every 20, 30 minutes when you're on the wreck. That's just to get them on the feed, all right? A wreck can be a couple of hundred meters long sometimes, and God knows how high. Alternatively, you may just be fishing a small wreck, but by getting that scent in the water, it's almost like when you're cooking a Sunday roast and you can start, someone opens the oven and you can smell the meat and you're upstairs, you know, oh, that smells nice. That's what we're doing here with the conger eels. Get that scent in the water. Don't worry about it if you get a bite. Just, just get it up, change your baits, fresh bait down. Chuck the, the old one, chuck it up tight of your boat, your anchor. It will drift down and it might end up on the on the ground or it might end up behind it. But the scent is going. That's that's absolutely key. Um, and uh, another tip is get them out of that wreck. The first sort of 10, 15 seconds of a fight with a conger eel is crucial because you've got to get it up out of that wreck. Because if it gets in a hole, you, you won't get it. Your line will start sort of right angling on a bit. You'll just lose. It'll just part off and you lose your gear. So that is it. That's my top tips for conger eel fishing. I hope you found this useful. I know it's only a bit of fun and it's a, it's a little bit of stuff you may already know, but I'll do, do one of these for each of the fish in the UK waters and you might along the way pick a few bits up for it. So I hope you've enjoyed Fishy Fridays. That was conger eel fishing and I'll see you again soon.